Hi there. Previously we started to look at characters and strings and we looked at declaring character variables, declaring strings and assigning values to those. We looked at how strings have a, each letter in a string or character in a string has an index of its own and we looked at some of the methods associated with the string class. Today we're going to look at those a little further and we're going to start to look at the string buffer class and the functionality that it affords us when working with characters and strings. The first thing to note is that we cannot alter a string. We can rewrite a whole string, but we can't go into one of those indexes in a string and change the value of just that one particular index. So in order to do that, what we do is we start to look at using string buffers. A string buffer can be used to manipulate strings. It's only one of the many options available to us. So we're going to take a look at declaring those, creating string buffers, appending letters or characters to a string buffer, and then converting a string buffer back into a string. Again, there are a number of methods associated with the string buffers. We're only going to look at a couple of those today, um, and you could explore the remainder of those later. So, let's take a look at string buffers first. If, for instance, we wanted to declare a string buffer called strbuff, we use the code string buffer strbuff. Again, strbuff is just the abbreviation I'm using for the name of my object you can choose to name it whatever you want. So string buffer is the name of the class, strbuff is the name of our object. So we declare it just like we would any other object. What that does is it creates an empty string buffer, which for all intents and purposes looks and acts like a string. Okay, the only difference is that we can change the contents of a string buffer. We can add to it, we can remove from it, we can insert characters in particular places and that's what a string doesn't allow us to do. So to create the string buffer then we say strbuff equals new string buffer. Okay and that sets our string buffer up the same way that our string would be set up with each space having its own index so every character that goes in there can be indexed in the same way as a string. What's important to note here is that a string buffer has no defined length. It grows with the number of characters that we add to it. So every time we add a character, it gets bigger, which is why I've left it open here on the end, because we don't really know how big the string buffer is going to be until we've finished using it. The append method allows us to add a character to a string buffer, a character or a string, to the next available space in the string buffer. So if my space is empty and I append, or my string buffer is empty and I append a character to it, it's going to put the character in the first available space, which is index zero. If there's something, so if we take a look here at appending the letter A to the string buffer, the code is strbuff.append, and then in the brackets, we just put whatever character we want to add in. So here we're appending the letter A, single quotes because it's a single character, and the method here is append. And what that does is it puts the letter A in the first index, which in this case is zero, okay? But now I've got a string buffer that has contents in it. So supposing I wanted to append more than one letter to the string buffer. Supposing I wanted to append B, C, D. Again, I use the append method. Here, though, I'm using double quotes instead of single quotes, and I'm appending B, C, and D all together. And what that does is then it goes to the next available space, which is 1, and it appends B, C, and D to the three next available spaces in my string buffer. So now I have this string buffer with A, B, C, and D stored in it. Each one has its own index. It looks like a string, acts kind of like a string. The only difference is we can add to it, we can remove pieces, we can play around with it. Finally, when we've finished with our string buffer and we've got it to the state that we want it to be in, we have to turn it back into a string because we don't, we don't want to be sending string buffers to and from our instantiable class. What we really want to be dealing with is strings. So we use the toString method from the string buffer class to turn a string buffer back into a string when we've finished with it. So first off, let's declare a string called new word. So that's our new word string. And now let's change string buffer back into a string and store it in new word. And the code for that is new word equals strbuff.toString. And what that does is it takes the contents of my string buffer, turns it back into a string, and stores it in new word. 
Okay, so the best way to understand any of this, as usual, is to take a look at an example. 